Hello, let's take a brief trip from the dark world of Oilers and Gimbal Lock to the bright shining world of Quaternions. In the Animation Master Universe, we can have Quaternion interpolation and edit the channels and live to tell the tale. So put the kids to bed, hide the dog, tell your wife you're really watching porn because what I'm about to do here is something the professionals will tell you is impossible. 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 I have here the uh, comparison scene that I showed you before, and I'm going to temporarily hide bachelor number two and bachelor number three, and we're just going to concentrate on this one model that is rigged to work with quaternion interpolation, which is the default in Animation Master. I'm going to create a little bit of animation here at one second intervals just for clarity. And uh, in fact, I'm going to go to the top view so that this is extra clear. I'm going to make some diagonal motion here. And I'll go ahead another second. And go to the other side. And let's scrub between that and see if, uh, indeed, I have some diagonal motion there. I'm going to copy these keyframes and get a little bit of free animation instead of having to repose that out. And let's do it just one more time. Let me scrub through that and see what I got. Indeed, I have some back and forth diagonal motion. And now I'm going to do something I saw Victor Navon do once. He converted linear motion into circular motion by shifting a channel. Uh, in this view, we do have access to uh, all of our channels in a timeline view, but I can also see them in a traditional curve view that you are probably all familiar with. This is a quaternion interpolation, so we actually have four channels, not three. There's W, X, Y, and Z. And in looking at this, I can see that I've, I've created a little bit of Z rotation that I really don't want. So uh, I can edit that out by scaling that curve down to nothingness. I could also just delete those keyframes and get the same result. If I scrub through it now, I have a, a more straight, linear, back-and-forth motion. Now, let's try something. What I'd really like for this thing to do is go around in a more circular fashion. Let's pick the X-curve, select all the keyframes in it, and I'm going to use my cursor key on the keyboard to shift this over by uh, 12 frames, I guess. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And now if I scrub through this, we have circular motion. Notice that it, it wasn't necessary for all these keys in the different channels to remain locked to each other. I can shift these at will to create these sort of effects. Now let's try something even crazier that they say cannot be done. Let's say I don't want it to just go evenly around in a circle. Let's say I want it to zoom through some point. Let's say, uh, how about here? And I'll zoom in on my curves so I can see them better. Um, I know intuitively, I know intuitively that the, the steeper the angle of the curve, the faster the motion. So what I can do, I want to, uh, right now we have very slow motion, flat motion here on this Y channel, but I can pick this keyframe and break it. We actually call that peaking in Animation Master and adjust my bias handles, which you probably know as tangents. And now I have a problem. My X curve at this point, let me go back to my whole view. My X-curve doesn't actually have a keyframe at this point. 
my green curve does, and I had some handles I could adjust there, my X curve does not. But I can add a keyframe, and I can crank on this thing and make that very steep also at that point. And let's just take a look at what the splines hath wrought. As I go through this, here's our regular motion, and now it zooms through there pretty much like we were expecting because we made very steep paths at this moment on the timeline. What about this W channel up here? In this case, it doesn't matter very much. Um, it becomes more significant when the bone has departed quite a bit from its original orientation, but again, um, that's something you can edit if you need to be, if you need to. And it, it, I don't really know what these numbers mean. I don't think any animator really knows what these numerical values mean. What they look at is the shape of these curves to decide is something moving fast or slow. And do I need to make it flatter or steeper to make it slower or faster at a certain point? The numerical values of these curves really aren't of great importance. What's important is the shape of these things. And that's why we have a curve editor instead of a little box to enter numbers in. Let's just scrub through this timeline a little bit more just to see this all in operation. Here's our regular rotation motion. And then zoom. We go through that spot where we edited the curves to make faster motion. And if I'm not happy with exactly what I got with my very first try there, I can yank on these handles to make all kinds of adjustments to these curves. I can make my biases uh, smaller. I could do all kinds of crazy stuff. And if you pause the computer now and look outside, you'll see that the, the, stun, the sun still shines in the day, the moon still shines at night, the planets are still in their orbit, and the mathematical laws of the universe have not been violated, even though we have edited channels and broken tangents in Quaternion interpolation. The professional said this couldn't be done. I wonder what else they're wrong about.